Y'all got to remind me to stop recording at the end of class because I keep recording for like three hours. Okay. <laughs> Using regular numbers here. We learned in the order of operations that multiplication and division come side by side and they're pretty much interchangeable, right? Because one undoes the other. If you notice in this, we have straight multiplication. There's absolutely no addition, no subtraction. <coughs> if I figure this problem out, 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24, divided by 12 gives me a final answer of what? 2. We know this answer is 2. Multiplying it all out, if you did it on your calculator, if you did it in your head, the answer is 2. Now, we also learned that we can simplify before we put all this together because sometimes it's easier to work with smaller numbers. And as long as 3 and 3 are being divided, we could cancel them, correct? Same thing with 4 and 4. And we notice that we still get the same answer because it's simply a reduced fraction. The fraction hasn't changed. The total value of the fraction hasn't changed. Okay, just the looks of it because we've reduced it. We also looked at dividing monomials earlier this quarter. And we said, again, if you can find identical pieces here, if it's straight multiplication, then you can go ahead and cancel so, for instance, the y's, since y is divided by y, and that equals 1, I could simply cancel it. And since 2 divided by 4 can be reduced to 1 half, I can simply cancel it. And therefore, the final answer here would be x over 2, right? So, when we have only multiplication, can we find individual pieces that are the same in the numerator and denominator and cancel them. Yes, we do not change the value of the fraction. We're simply reducing it. But when we start adding plus signs and minus signs, remember in the order of operations, are addition and division right next to each other and interchangeable? No. The order of operations says we have to do all of our adding and subtracting before we even think about dividing or multiplying. So if we were to work this out, we see that 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9 over 2 plus 1, which is 3. This fraction is equal to 3. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <coughs> now if I were to try to do like I did here and just identify little pieces that are the same and cancel them out, like these twos, for instance, do I still get three as a final answer? No. I have changed the whole value of the fraction, okay? And you can't do that. So as long as there's addition and subtraction, you cannot simply identify little pieces of the puzzle and just cross them out because you have to find that entire sum first, all right? Now, how does this play into what we're going to be learning today? <clears throat> this is the second step of what I'm going to be teaching you today. This is already factored, okay? But once we get our polynomials factored, what we are going to look for is, are there individual pieces such as these that are not involved in addition and subtraction? Because if they are, then I can cancel those x's. So this x and this x squared at the bottom, they're not involved in the addition and subtraction. They're out there on their own. So yes, I can reduce those two things, which gives me a single x in the denominator, right? But once I have these groups of addition and subtraction, the only way I can cancel is if there is an identical group in the numerator and the denominator. Notice, this is the sum <coughs> of x and 2 divided by the sum of x 
and 2. Well, x is going to be the same number, is it not? So what's something divided by itself? 1. So these entire groups can cancel. Now the next set of parentheses is the sum of a number in 1 divided by the difference of that same number in 2. Can you cancel that? No, that's two completely different answers. So since I can't cancel it, I'm simply going to bring it down and show what I had left after I reduced my fraction. Okay? So this is the final piece of the puzzle that we need to be able to reduce polynomials in fractions. Yes? No, you're not going to put it back together. If it's simplified, you want it bro broken apart as much as possible, canceled out as much as possible. Okay? All right. Now, here's another one. Now, remember yesterday we talked about placing restrictions on variables if they're in the denominator? Before I start canceling, I need to restrict the variables. Because remember, my final answer is a simplified form of the original. But as long as these variables equal something that will create a zero in the denominator, my original problem will not work. So before I cancel, I need to find restrictions on variables. So this is what I taught you yesterday. So looking at this problem, it's already been factored. Are there x's in the denominator? I need to place restrictions on those x's. What are the restrictions on those x's? Negative one-half and positive one-half. Now, how can we write that shorthand? Plus or minus one-half. You don't have to put one-half comma negative one-half. You can simply put plus or minus. Why do you do that? Because I forgot. And I remembered midstream, and instead of stopping and then picking up again, I just went through. Okay? Now that we've placed restrictions, we need to identify, are there groups that are the same? There is one group here that can cancel with this one. Right? Now since there's another one, can I go ahead and cancel it again? No, I've already gotten rid of this 2x plus 1 at the bottom. Is 2x plus 1 the same answer as 2x minus 1? No, so I can't cancel those groups. And because it's a group, I can't pick apart any little individual pieces inside. So the final answer here would be 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1. You do not have to put the group back in parentheses, but you can if you want to. As long as x does not equal positive or negative 1 half. And this would be our final answer. Now, we have all the pieces that we need to simplify, okay? We've learned how to factor. What are the different ways of factoring? What's the first thing we should always look for? Greatest common factor. We have factoring by grouping, which occurs when there are how many terms? Four, four terms. If there are four terms, you're probably going to be grouping. We have trinomials. <coughs> We have the difference of perfect squares, and then we have perfect cubes that we learned. So we're going to be using all of that to be able to do this. We're going to have to know how to place restrictions in the denominator, and we're going to have to know how to cancel. All right, so you all ready? All right, buckle up. Let's go. Our instructions simplify this fraction. If you look at the fraction, you notice that there is addition and subtraction occurring. So since there is addition and subtraction and nothing is off by itself, I cannot simply identify individual pieces and start picking it apart. Okay? But maybe if I factor everything completely, I may discover that there are groups that are the same. So the first step is to factor... Completely.